In this video is my Gata Prize application for my brand new grounded Delta style 3D printer called Simpson. I received much inspiration from seeing the RepRap Morgan and Rostock. These printers had unusual geometry. Most typical printers have prels oriented in the X, Y, and Z axes and these printers decided that that wasn't that important. We have software that can account for all of that nowadays. So they made drastically different machines and really paved the way for different thought. And I love both of those projects. There are some downfalls that um, that I thought, you know, we could we could extend this thinking and take it even further. So I was thinking both of these designs don't have a low center of gravity, so I think that's a must. They also had linear rails, and from my experience building uh, CNC machines, linear rails are one of the most expensive parts of the machine, so if you get rid of that and replace those with radial bearings, then you would have a much, much cheaper design. I also thought it would be very important to have a static bed. It's always nice not having to move your part to build bigger, heavier things. You could also scale up to printing much, much larger things where you can bring the printer to something. want it to be cheap and printable. My initial concept used belt. Um, I, I put it on the forum and I immediately started getting lots and lots of feedback from people in the RepRap community which led me to this series of design iterations. You can see that um, the uh, my, first, my first iteration wasn't too much different. I just kind of cleaned up the design so it was a little bit more printable. And then Anorak on the forum came up with the idea of using spring return, driving it a block and tackle of string. And uh, this ended up to greatly simplify the math and made it easier to run the string. And so you can see here it is a little bit more fleshed out, upper right. The bottom left, you can see I actually built it. Uh, it looks a little different than the picture, but uh, pretty much the same. It works beautifully, except that there's five millimeters of play in the end effector, which could be great for some applications, but for 3D printing, uh, it's not good enough. And bottom middle, you can see here, I attempted to solve the problem with just adding parallel linkages to mirror all of the arms that I had in this initial design. I'm not a big fan, actually, of, of the over complexity of it, except once I built it, I started to fall in love with it. I'm still, I'm still hoping to go back to this bottom left hand. main problem is torsional uh, stability and I, I could just uh, glue uh, the two sides of the board together and almost uh, increase it by a factor of 10. So that would be an easy thing to do. Maybe that's enough to get it below uh, 0.1 millimeters, which would be, would be a nice goal. I knew that the parallel linkages would work, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get the other one to work. So for this competition, I decided to go ahead with the parallel linkages, and that's what you see on the bottom right. And you can see also see its first three squirrel prints. Uh, features of this printer, I only use M3 and M8 hardware. I only use two types of bearings. I only use two types of bearings, uh, 608 bearings, which are just typical skate bearings, inline skate bearings, and 6805 bearings, which are uh, bike wheel hub bearings. And um, there are no electrical end stops, which save on firmware complexity and electrical complexity. Um, you just turn the, uh, the motors off and the machine will automatically return to its top dead center position. It can print bigger versions of itself. It's very quiet except for the plastic squeaking on its on each other and I have plans to uh, to remove that. It uses off the shelf parts. You can see uh, if you go to my Thingiverse site there is a bill of materials with my vendors and it has a maintenance free glass bed. The build envelope is 10 liters. You can see that it has a kind of a triangular area at the bottom but it's approximately a 350 millimeter diameter area that you can print on. It's about 190 millimeters tall. That I think is actually almost a perfect build uh, envelope. I wasn't expecting it but um, a lot of times I want to do a lot of little parts so this will let me do lots and sometimes I want to do something that's really tall and that'll let me do this. Hardly ever do I need to print something that's really big that's a cubic shape. You can easily do six inch cubed. I use the slicer's default speed. The printer perform beautifully. I did and did some tweaks for the the Bowden tube, but other than that, the uh, printer performs wonderfully. I can 
I've gotten it up to greater than 200 millimeters per second. I'm not too interested in, in seeing exactly how fast it can go because I know I can't print that fast. Realistically, probably I can print up to 90 millimeters per second, but I have printed it at 60 millimeters per second with, with really good uh, quality results. Um, let's see, it's 40% plastic by volume. 30% of this machine is the wood and the glass. 13% of the volume is from nuts and bolts and bearing. There are 341 different parts. 59 of those are plastic. There are 54 unique parts and 24 unique plastic parts. So uh, let's see, the cost is about $390. About 270 is in electronics and about 120 is in, in the mechanical setup. Uh, I broke that down to $43 bearings, $23 of plastic, and $17 of nuts and bolts. As you can see, there's not much room at the bottom um, for me the mechanical system. Pretty much everything that needs to be done in the future for price reduction is all in the electronic setup. The power requirements I thought I should talk about here, I haven't actually measured it, but I have calculated what the draw would be, and it's approximately 60 watts if I don't have the heated bed on. That's uh, 10 watts about for each stepper and about 20 watts for my um, hot end whenever it's being run at 24 volts. I should take this opportunity to talk about leveling. Um, I had to do it manually. I took a bunch of sample offsets from regular intervals all over the print bed. I used linear regression to fit that surface and then I used um, a G-code preprocessor to apply all these Z corrections whenever I was doing the coordinate transformation. I hope to embed all of that in the firmware in the future, but for now it works pretty good and it's only one more step in the tool chain. It will take approximately 53 hours if, if I can print at 33 milliliters per hour. That's about 1.75 liters of plastic. Assembly, uh, whenever I built the prototype, was 12 hours. Um, I expect it to, to be reduced down to four hours with my redesign with a lot of the parts incorporated with each other will make it a lot quicker to put together. Um, there are about 60 bolts and if you put in a bolt every four minutes that should be uh, right on four hours. And I provided a very nice assembly manual which with exploded views of all the sub-assemblies and the final assembly so it should be really easy for people to figure out what bolt goes where. Well, here's Simpson. I've worked very, very hard over the last month uh, to, uh, to get him to the state he is now. I was really hoping for the application that I would be able to make a baby Simpson, and I got pretty close, but I, I uh, hit that limit where uh, I knew that the print time was greater than the time I had left, so I stopped trying to make a baby Simpson and just try to make really good documentation. You can see some, some issues that I had. Um, uh, one of the first numbers I was printing, uh, I had the scaling all wrong. I uh, had a simple number off in my Python script that did the uh, transformation. Then I got this piece. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a problem in it. What happened, uh, I, was, um, I fixed the numbers. This is actually the correct length. And, um, and I had a problem with the extruder coming out. Um, I now have the extruder completely captured within the hub here, but before um, it was just press fit with paper and I had to fix that. Um, so this this print uh, failed and, and it got close to the end, but not quite all the way there. And so I went back to it and I was getting closer to that magical deadline where I wasn't going to be able to make it. And I was printing all four of these guys, you can see those those cover quite a large area of the bed, bigger than a typical riprap printer can print, and um, they were doing wonderfully. The print quality was great. Everything was just going right, and I was like, it's going to, it's going to happen. I'm going to get my baby Simpson before, before the uh, deadline, but, you know, <laughs> something has to go wrong, and my filament drive started stripping um, filament, so um, I'm still debugging that. I was about to switch it over to another um, filament drive that I had laying around, but in the interest of time and making sure I had a really good documentation of the unique part of Simpson, um, I left it alone and I haven't printed anything else since I printed these four. Um, 
in the redesign of Baby Simpson, uh, there are, are going to be quite a, well, just a few different uh, changes. As you can see, this is all acrylic. Um, and it, obviously, I did not print the acrylic. I laser cut that. Um, but this bed is designed where it can print all of these uh, members and actually slightly bigger members. And um, the acrylic, I couldn't do any, uh, any strict, any, any, anything but simple cuts. And so I had to print out little bearing seats uh, everywhere. Um, it took quite a bit of, of finessing to be able to assemble this robot. And um, that was really where most of my assembly time was went, was trying to make sure all the bearing seats were in the correct place. Um, in the redesign, all everything gets incorporated into the actual plastic members, so the part count goes way down and the assembly time hopefully will go way down. Um, I found out that my plastic pulleys for my block and tackle, they started wearing down and breaking, and I actually just slipped the string between the pulleys. Uh, with I had a little bit of extra plastic sticking out um, just so they would slide easily against each other and it actually started performing better and uh, the pulleys weren't actually rotating it was actually just gliding over the plastic and so in my redesign I'm getting rid of all the actual rotating um, plastic pulleys and I'm replacing it with an aluminum anodized tube um, at each location and uh, this the Spectra fishing line is ultra slippery and the anodized aluminum uh, tube is going to be ultra slippery and I don't I don't see there be any problem and then you'll be able to choose your own mechanical advantage um, right now I have four springs um, as I was reading a bunch what a lot of people wrote up um, about Simpson through uh, on the internet um, somebody's like hey you know eventually we'll be able to just put rubber bands on this and I was like that's a really good idea and so um, yet to be tested. Uh, the next design I'm hoping to also put those same aluminum tubes, just reuse the same same size for all four locations and, and, uh, and just stretch um, rubber bands from one, t one tube to the next. And then you can pick your um, spring force just by adding as many rubber bands as it takes. Um, what I'm going to suggest for um, for people to build it is to uh, add rubber bands one at a time until you can press down Simpson to um, whatever location you want and it will return back up to the top dead center. If that doesn't happen for every single location on the bed then uh, the spring force is not sufficient and so you have to keep on adding that and you probably want to add a little bit extra so you can get you know the acceleration that you want. Um, and then once, once that happens um, then I would suggest just looping the string back and forth between the two uh, the two anodized uh, tubes to get the mechanical advantage you want. And um, you should be able to put any size motor on here that you want. Uh, I, I would expect NEMA 14s to be no problem at typical printing speeds. These uh, these motors have shown to be way overpowered. Um, I've been able to um, whip this machine all around and. Um, at, at insane speeds, except that it looks like it's about to. Uh, it, it looks concerning because of the uh, the side everything starts flopping around. Um, one really neat thing is though, um, whenever I push on an elbow, that's what I call these, um, the end effector moves very slightly. Um, in this configuration, it actually is moving, um, but whenever it's lower, and I've actually during a print, I've push this up to five millimeters and it has um, it hasn't even affected the print quality which is pretty phenomenal but um, people are going to be concerned whenever they see things flopping like this and um, so uh, I just set the acceleration values uh, in the firmware so it doesn't it doesn't get to where this is flopping around so much Again, I wish I had a, uh, a self-replicated uh, version of Simpson. I think since I've only been working on this for a month and I'm already getting pretty good results, uh, there's still some tweaks here and there that I need to do. 
uh, I think it's all but inevitable that uh, Simpson's going to uh, replicate and become a true member of the Rep Rep community. Here are all my resources for Simpson. The Rip Rep Wiki has a page for Simpson. I also put all the files at Thingiverse, and I have a link to the development forum with a wealth of information throughout the whole design process. Thank you so much for your consideration.